Welcome to the Lathe Soft Jaw video series, brought to you by Haas Automation. In our first video, we learned about the fundamentals of cutting lathe soft jaws when we made two different sets of OD gripping jaws. In this second video, we are once again joined by Andrew, who will now cover the important aspects of ID gripping jaws using this ring cap as an example. We also cover recutting your jaws as well as how and when to add a taper to JAWS to achieve a perfect fit. Most often, ID gripping JAWS are used to hold parts, which must be completely profiled on the outside face of the part, or where the OD geometry of the part makes the surface difficult to grip. The ID bore and back face of this ring cap were completed while the workpiece was OD gripped in the first operation. And since we need to machine curved surfaces on the part's outer diameter, we need to hold it with internal gripping jaws. Andrew is considering whether to use standard soft jaws or pie jaws to ID grip this part. If he were to use regular soft jaws to hold this thin walled part, at higher holding pressures, the ring would begin to distort during clamping. Pie jaws allow this part to be clamped in a more robust and consistent manner. Pie jaws are often used to hold thin wall parts that will deform easily without full support. As shown in this graphic, gripping force is distributed much more evenly over the surface area of our pie jaws than compared to a regular soft jaw. As we covered in the previous video, we have ensured the jaws are clean before mounting that the jaws are torqued in place, and that the chuck was lubricated at the beginning of the day using this Chucky's grease. Remember, with our jaws in position for cutting, the T-nuts must be inside the chuck body. Since we'll be using these pie jaws to hold a large ID part, we can't use this style of boring ring since it will block the cutting path. Instead, Andrew will use this style of boring ring. Spinning the boring ring counterclockwise moves the three threaded grippers outward so they can be removed. Andrew flips them around and inserts them back in the body, matching the letters on the grippers to the correct letters on the slots. The jaw grippers are now facing outward. At the chuck, Andrew places the outward facing grippers into the screw holes in the pie jaws and clamps down. However, the jaw stroke is not at the center of travel, so the boring ring will need to be adjusted. To do this, unclamp the jaws and rotate the threaded body of the boring ring to adjust the position of the grippers. This time, with the chuck clamped, the jaws are in the middle of their stroke, right where they need to be to cut these jaws. We set the clamping pressure to 100 psi and we'll keep the spindle speed below the recommended 900 RPM. And just as we did with OD gripping, we will need to push the jaws in the same direction that we will be ID gripping the part, this time outward against the boring ring. Take special note of how fast the spindle will be rotating during actual part machining. As speeds increase over 1000 RPM, Centrifugal force acting on the jaws will begin to significantly increase gripping force as the jaws are forced outward. Chuck pressure may need to be reduced to compensate for this added force. This is another reason to consider using pie jaws. With pie jaws, the additional centrifugal jaw pressure will be spread evenly over the internal surface of the part. Regardless of what kind of ID gripping jaws you are using, jaws holding the inside diameter of the workpiece should always be cut to match the nominal workpiece diameter. With the jaws pushing outward against the boring ring at 100 psi, the master jaws at mid-stroke, and our program set to cut to the nominal part diameter, these jaws are ready to cut. As recommended in the first video, we make a narrow groove at the bottom of the jaws so that any workpiece with sharp edges will sit flush to the jaws back face. We deburr the jaws as necessary. Now we're ready to make our part.
To demonstrate how uniformly the pie jaws grip the part, Andrew mounts an indicator to check how much runout we have with our part gripped in these jaws. At 250 PSI clamp pressure, our part's total indicated runout using the pie jaws is 5 ten thousandths. In contrast, with a standard set of soft jaws cut to grip this part, we see a total indicator runout of 15 thousandths at 250 PSI. Here is another example of a part that we want to ID grip. This pulley has sufficient wall thickness to allow us to use standard soft jaws. However, the part's inside diameter bore, which we want to grip, is so small that neither of our boring rings will fit inside of our cutting path. In this illustration, the red ring represents the cutting path needed to cut the jaws to support our pulley part. We can't mount any of our traditional boring rings in this position because we plan to cut here. One alternative is to make a custom ring to fit a groove or relief you cut into the face of the jaws. This allows for adequate clearance of the cutting path while the jaws are pushing outward against the ring, just as they will when holding the part. Although there are many factors that you should take into account when choosing regular versus pie jaws, these examples represent two possible scenarios to consider when trying to properly support your part.